The inverse matrix and the properties of inverse matrices provide us with another way to solve linear systems of equations. So besides Kramer's rule, Gaussian elimination, and actually many other methods, there's another way to solve in our linear systems of equations. And this one that we're going to look at in this video is using the inverse of the coefficient matrix. Now computing the inverse of a matrix, even if you do it with a computer, is actually quite costly. And you'll see how costly it is when we uh, look at actually figuring them out in another video. But if you do have to solve the system AX equals to B for multiple different B vectors, but the same coefficient matrix, using the inverse matrix is actually not a bad idea. It can be quite useful. So first we're going to see how the method works, and in some other videos we'll look at how to actually calculate inverse matrices. Then you can put the two together and use them to solve a whole problem. So remember that when an inverse exists, we have this property that says A multiplied by its inverse matrix is the same as the inverse matrix multiplied by A, so in other words the order doesn't matter, and it'll always give you the identity matrix, the correctly sized identity matrix of course. So that's the inverse property. And we can use that to help us solve the equation AX equal to B. So if we have the matrix equation AX equal to B, and we want to get rid of this A matrix, almost like we're dividing by it, like we would in just regular old single variable algebra. Well, we can't divide because there is no division in matrices, but we can pre-multiply it by the inverse. And if we pre-multiply by the inverse, we'll end up with the identity matrix. And, of course, the identity matrix multiplied by any other matrix will leave that other matrix alone. So if we pre-multiply by A inverse, A inverse times A is I, I times X is X, and we have a solution that X is equal to A inverse times B. We just need to remember that it's a pre-multiplication because order matters with matrices. So here's an example to show how it works. The system of linear equations, 3X minus Y equals 0, and x plus y equals 1 can be written in matrix form, like this. Check that if you like, if you're not sure how we get that. Given that the inverse matrix of this coefficient matrix, 3, minus 1, 1, and 1, is given by this matrix, we want to solve for x and y. Now what I'm doing here is I'm just giving you what A inverse is equal to. We're not actually going to figure it out in this video. We're going to use that and what we just saw up here to figure out what the answer, uh, the solution vector x and y actually is. So remember, the idea is if we start off with the matrix equation A, x equal to B, we can multiply on the left, pre-multiply, both sides by the inverse matrix. So doing the same to both sides, we're not really changing anything. Just the form and the way things look. Then we remember that A inverse times A is the identity matrix. And the identity multiplied by any matrix, even a vector, provided they're the right sizes, will leave that matrix or vector alone. So we have then that x is equal to A inverse times B. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to say that the x vector is equal to A inverse times the B vector. And we're given that the A inverse matrix is a quarter, a quarter, minus a quarter, and three quarters. And the B vector straight from the question is 0, 1. And all we've got to do to find X is multiply out the matrix. So we've got a quarter by 0 is 0. A quarter by 1 is a quarter. And along the bottom row down the column, minus a quarter by 0 is 0. 3 quarters by 1 is 3 quarters. So we've got that X is equal to 1 on 4. And Y is equal to 3 on 4. And that's our solution. As easy as that, provided you have the inverse matrix to start off with. If you don't have the inverse matrix, there's a bit of work in actually figuring it out in the first place. So, what we're going to do now, find out how to determine the inverse of a matrix. Now you can either just go straight to the video to see how it's done, or maybe check out your textbook, or your reference text, or a website that you've been looking at. See if you can follow along with how it's shown in a different way. Then you can come back to the videos as well. Of course, as usual, attempt the exercises from the worksheet. Make sure you're actually understanding why this method works and not just thinking of it as a formula x equal to a inverse b.